Let's talk about potential treatments of the novel coronavirus. The problem we are currently facing is that we don't have any drugs or vaccines, and it might still take a while until anything useful comes out. However, this doesn't mean that we are entirely defenseless. This forces us to go back to some old methods, developed more than 100 years ago, and from there on used throughout history whenever things became really, really bad. I'm talking about convalescent serum. Let me first explain what convalescent serum is and how it works. Then we will look at other examples of viral outbreaks where convalescent serum has been used successfully in the past. And in the end, I want to talk about how feasible it is, who would benefit most from it, and whether there are any problems or dangers with it. So what is convalescent serum? Serum is a fluid, soluble component of your blood. And convalescent serum is serum from people who have been previously infected and who have developed antibodies against the disease. Now, antibodies are proteins made by your immune cells to fight off pathogens. And they are also the reason why you can only get sick once by the same pathogens, if we consider that the pathogen doesn't mutate. Antibodies can bind to the surface of pathogens like viruses and neutralize them, meaning they prevent them from infecting our cells. And antibodies can also help other immune cells to more efficiently clear the virus. So if somebody was infected with a virus like the coronavirus, his blood is full of these antibodies and they can be obtained in the form of convalescent serum and given to other people who are currently sick with the disease. Now getting the serum out of a patient is a pretty established process by most blood banks and hospitals around the world and simply means to separate blood into its components and the serum can be easily obtained from any patient and given to a patient in need. Now let's talk about some examples when convalescent serum was used in the past. There are reports that convalescent serum was used during the Spanish flu, which killed a third of the population in Europe after the First World War. Convalescent serum was also used during the West African Ebola epidemic. And here we even have a small study that found that people who received the convalescent serum were twice as likely to survive than people who only received the standard treatment. You might also be aware that this is not the first coronavirus outbreak. Over the last 20 years there have been two more coronavirus outbreaks and both more deadly than the current one, MERS and SARS. And for SARS, there are reports that when people were treated early enough with convalescent serum, they were much more likely to be cured by the SARS disease. Now we have also some reports out of China that convalescent serum was used to treat COVID-19, so the disease caused by the novel coronavirus, which is so far one of the most positive things I've heard during this epidemic. Okay, let's talk about how feasible it is, who should get it first, and whether there are any problems or risks with it. So according to a recent article written by two experts in infectious disease, it is very feasible and with our modern blood bank technologies, it really appears to be safe. Peter Hotes, who is another expert in virology and the dean for the National School of Tropical Medicine, explains that it can either be used as prophylaxis, so meaning to prevent somebody from getting sick by the coronavirus, or as a treatment. Let's talk about some numbers. If convalescent serum is giving as prophylaxis, it appears to be the case that only about 5 ml are enough to protect the person for a certain time. However, if we give somebody who is severely sick with a coronavirus disease convalescent serum, it requires much more of it, up to 60 times more, so about 300 ml. And apparently a person who produces a convalescent serum can provide about 300 milliliters of convalescent serum. So meaning if we only treat the ones that are really sick, we have something like a one to one ratio of donor to patient. However, if we give it as prophylaxis, we can actually prevent many more people from actually contracting the disease. Now this brings us obviously to the point where we should discuss who should get the convalescent serum. Because especially as it stands right now, we don't have so many people yet that are recovered from the coronavirus and we expect many more to be infected anytime soon. So obviously elderly and immunocompromised people come to mind here. However, another class of people we definitely have to consider are healthcare workers because our whole system relies on them more than ever right now 
And there are also some reports that indicate that healthcare workers contract, if they contract the virus, they develop a much more severe outcome. Probably simply because they get a much higher viral load by people who are severely sick laying in the hospitals. So obviously these are two classes of people that should get the convalescent serum as a prophylaxis. And then of course people who are severely sick with it, even though, as I said, we require much more of it. Okay, before we get too excited about it, let's talk about certain caveats. A report found that out of 99 people who recovered from the novel coronavirus, only 87 people had neutralizing antibody in the blood. So the antibodies we actually need for convalescent serum to be effective. Now, it is a very complex topic and would certainly exceed the focus of this video to explain or to even try to explain why this could be the case. And I'm working on a video to explain this, so please be patient with this. Then another factor is that um, some people might experience some symptoms of sickness who receive convalescent serum, so they can't tolerate it so well. However, according to different experts, um, this seems to be pretty unlikely with our modern technology, so we are pretty well advanced here to find out who should receive what blood. Another concern that is probably unlikely, but we really have to keep a close eye on, is antibody-dependent enhancement of infections. It simply means that when you have antibodies that don't function perfectly against the virus, or if another viral strain affects you, it actually makes the disease outcome worse, not better. Again, very complicated topic, unlikely that it happens here, or we have to keep a close eye on it. Okay, another obvious problem with convalescent serum is that it attenuates your own immune response. And this is also simply the reason why me or you, if you feel healthy, should not get it or should not take it as prophylaxis, because this convalescent serum will then do the job for our immune system and we will not, or most likely not, build a strong immune defense against the coronavirus and we won't become immune to it. Okay, here's the biggest problem and I hope that somebody who is in charge listens. We don't have enough donors. Why don't we have enough donors? Because we don't have enough tests. We simply don't really know who is sick and has already recovered. A recent study found that probably about 86% of people have the coronavirus but remain undetected and those people could easily become donors for convalescent serum. Convalescent serum that then could save lives. And I know that many people, much smarter than me, are now trying to figure out how to get more test kits and how to get more people tested, but this simply needs to be a priority. Not only for the reason that we can then donate our convalescent serum, but also a little bit for the reason that we don't endanger other people anymore. So right now, I'm for instance, definitely not gonna go home to my parents. My parents are above 60, and if I have it, maybe I don't notice it, but I will endanger them. So we need test kits. This is another reason. All right, here are two more videos that you might find interesting. Also, please consider giving this video a like, because this tells the YouTube algorithm to share it to more people. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you next time. Stay healthy.